Smart Home dashboards are a thing of their own, especially for those of us using Home Assistant or Apple HomeKit. And whilst the latter does not offer much flexibility, the former offers endless customization. Today, we will review a perfect size Home Assistant dashboard for your smartphone with everything you need available at a glance and zero scrolling involved on the home screen. And with actionable buttons everywhere, you should be able to control things with ease. I've been using this dashboard for a couple of years now and it is my default way of operating my smart home. Although it relies on a number of custom integrations and front ends, it is still pretty straightforward to set up. Since a couple of years, Mushroom has become a go-to solution for Home Assistant, mainly because its predecessor, Minimalist, was just too difficult for many to work with. With the latest changes to default cards in Home Assistant, we may eventually see the switch towards those, but for now, Mushroom offers the best effort-reward balance for most. Adding Mushroom to your install is simple. Go to Hacks, Front End, click the plus sign and search for Mushroom. Don't forget to reload upon installing. Now the first step is done. The next step is to add another front-end arc card called Vertical Stacking Card. This will allow us to build areas on the dashboard easily. Finally, although we will not cover it today at length, it's recommended to bring in a card mod. It will later help you to style the card whichever way you really want. As soon as you have all three installed, you are ready to start building a dashboard. The end result will look like this. It mixes all three elements mentioned before with Home Assistant grid cards to give you an utmost flexibility. I'm a great believer in zoning of the smart home by room versus types of devices, hence why the setup. The first and the most important decision you need to make is how many zones do you want to define on the dashboard. Mine has eight, one for each room in the house and an additional zone for the overall home devices. For better usability, I highly recommend to create breaks with additional links or sensors to space the zones better. As you can see here, you will not be able to create more than 10 zones if you want to fit on a single screen without scrolling, and if you want to leverage chips for quick controls, you are limited to 8. To ensure that all cards stay together, we leverage the grid cards and subgrid cards within them. As you can see, we have top 4 top-level grids, each of which has 4 to 7 subgrids, with each zone having additional and final subgrid. This ensures that all elements stay vertically aligned and do not shift to the right, meaning that your smartphone experience will be identical on your laptop or any other bigger screen device in case you don't want to generate and maintain multiple different dashboards. As mentioned before, each zone represents a room through the single vertical stacking card integrated into an overall grid. Within the vertical stack, you have one mushroom template card and one mushroom chips card. The template sets the overall area of the stack and gives you options to add elements to separate these zones from others. In this case, we've added light entity, so upon clicking and holding the icon, you will be able to control the lighting in this zone. We then have a choice between assigning the icon or even adding a photo or picture from the repository you've uploaded to your Home Assistant storage, but we do not stop here. If you have temperature and humidity sensors we've covered in one of our earlier videos on the channel, we can add the values from those into the secondary information giving us immediate visibility to the climate in the zone. We can also bring any other necessary values by leveraging the state's templates functionality. Finally, we need to set tab actions so that the card does what we want it to. In this case, navigating to a different tab within our broader dashboard and assigning hold action to toggle the light entity. In the chips section, there is no real limit to what you may want to add. Battery levels, light state, sockets, security and more. It all comes down to what you want the fastest access to. In my case, I've chosen to focus on lights and socket groups, as well as window opening sensors. I recommend to use template chips as opposed to entity ones, so they can make it substantially more glanceable. Let's look into one in more detail to understand what exactly I mean. As you can see, this is a window contact sensor entity that changes its color and shape depending on its state. The code for this will be added to the description below, but simply put, we need to set the state of the entity in question and then write up different icons depending on the situation – open, closed, unavailable or other. We can then repeat the logic by assigning the color to it for better visual comprehension. Finally, we can set the tap action. In this case, we've chosen more info so that we can see the history of this entity. In other cases, like with the switch, we can use trigger instead so that we can switch it on and off. Note that with this layout, you will not be able to place more than four chips on a single line. It will move fifth and following chips onto the second line, ruining the look and feel. You can repeat the logic for all other zones and generate a complete dashboard, with eight zones in my case and additional links serving as breakers. You can do it for the visual editor or, if able, for the copy-paste in YAML. That will certainly save time, but may cause some errors initially, so if unsure, stick to visual editor. As you have noticed, my code contains card mode entries. 
Those are not strictly necessary and best discussed in a separate video alongside the topic of themes. All it really does is making things look a little better. Not sure it's worth the time investment though, if I'm completely honest. Now let's talk to notable mentions across the dashboard. For example, you can add a TV chip to control it right from here. I also recommend to add an array of buttons that lead to secondary pages that you may have built into your overall dashboard. In my case, I have buttons for scripts, sensor charts, security cameras, lights, sockets, multimedia and sporting scores. This top row of sensors serves a secondary purpose of pushing the zones lower so that it is more easily accessible on the phone when operated with one hand. The end result will look like this. And here you have it, a pixel-perfect smartphone dashboard that can be operated with one hand and used across larger screen devices. Leave your questions and comments below. See you in the next one.